Well, 25 years ago, the churches were a bit stopped in this area. The clergy found that the same people were going from church to church, and some of them were getting substantial amounts of money, and nobody knew where the money was actually going. So they formed a small coalition. There were, was no staff in the beginning of WFCM. It was really a coalition of the churches banding together. We just had human, humongous boxes. Everything was on a five by seven card. It was very, very simple. All of our records were on index cards. It worked that way until I think the following summer when my son donated the first laptop computer. And one of the volunteers from Centerville Methodist put together a, a program for us to keep track of the clients. And by doing that, we were able to um, screen clients who walked in the door. We were able to put uh, volunteers in place to actually have an on-call ministry. And you ch check the phone messages and there would be a client who would have called when explaining what their need was. An on-call person would call me at home and leave on my voicemail to whom I was to make a payment and for whom it was to be made. Some of that involved little, well, we can't help you with this, but we could help you pay that. And if we could help you pay that, then that'll free your funds for this. We had a budget of somewhere between twenty-five dollars and $50,000. So we're talking a lot of hard, hard work from our volunteers to move the ministry forward. Nonprofits and help organizations come and go. And I think because of the grounding in Christ, we remain the same. We have not changed. We stick to our mission and we do the best with God's blessing to follow it. The mission has remained the same. I think they're able to do much more with the facilities they have. That's certainly expanded into something far more than we ever dreamed at the time. <laughs> that mission in 1987 is the same as it is now and that is as an expression of God's love to provide life essential help to those in need. And I believe that it, it just tells the story that we were the same back then as we are now. The clients that come to Western Fairfax Christian Ministries come from all different backgrounds, religious and financial. We have quite a few that are mentally ill, substance abuse, low income. A lot of our clients now we are seeing are working, but they're very poor. As are uh, economy went into a recession, the, the role has become ever more important in keeping people from losing their homes. Homelessness is, is staying the same, but poverty seems to be uh, growing. We see about 300 families per month, and uh, last year we gave away over 30,000 bags of food. We also are able to help about four to 500 families with their rent. My brother he has a handicap with his arms and different medical problems. I come here because I had cancer. Last year, this is a surprise for me. My daughter have a cancer too. And they give me all the medicine my daughter need for the cancer. Because she don't have insurance. Well, I came at uh, this location, especially because of domestic violence. It's not easy to break the cycle special in a country that it doesn't belong to you. I don't have family here. I have nobody, it's just me with those two boys. That time my oldest I was five, they had one was three. So my income, it's uh, below, and I have two children. And my children, they are not US citizens. They don't qualify for any help, government help. Government alone is not the most efficient way or effective way to deliver services. Because there's a lot of places and a lot of people who fall through the cracks with any kind of government assistance. A group uh, like WFCM that has a, a citizen board that has uh, uh, you know, minimal staff clearly is going to be in a position to make better use of and better leverage um, the resources. There's an awful lot of hungry people out there and, uh, and I, I know that uh, I see the clients coming in here so I know that it's getting directly to them, to the needy. I think it's probably the most hands-on, um, visibly evident way that Christ is in this community. Jesus didn't just preach the gospel and that was it. He touched people's lives. 
He ate with them, he ministered to them, he spent time with them. And I'm able to help people in a very tangible way by giving them food that they can take home and feed their families. There are concrete things that are needed in order to love our neighbor, and a couple of them are to feed the hungry and clothe the naked. I didn't have food for my children, no clothing. I didn't even have a shoes with me. So when I come here every month, I get food, and sometimes you get cleaning supplies, whatever is possible. They help me with my bill. They help me with um, electric. They've been tremendously wonderful to him. He's gotten furniture through him. He got an apartment and didn't have anything, basically. And they've helped him with everything. Or during holiday, we get it, baskets, we get gift cards, so that helps. When it comes to helping, they don't hesitate to go the extra mile for people. The staff here is competent and professional and, um, and dedicated and caring and loving. They are beautiful in and out. Always when they come, everybody, I feel like family. I say the Western Minister is an amazing place, like a heart of God. I don't feel like there's any judging or criticism for anybody who comes. They make you feel, they make you feel good, they make you feel a like human being. When I came here, I, I see love. I feel love all the time. For me, I feel, I think, I touch the love here. There's plenty of agencies out there to help with big things like rent and utilities. But we underestimate how hard it is to find work boots or to find proper clothing to get a new job. We try to not only take care of their body, but to take care of their souls also. These are lost souls, and not only do we want to provide for them physically, but we want to provide for them spiritually. We want to actually be able to share the gospel of Christ with them. They can be well fed, um, they can be content, but they won't have peace without Christ. God will never, never, never leave you. Every single day I get up because God, I believe that He knows what He's doing. He made me, He made my children, so He'll take care of us. They're telling me the first time here, they are praying for me. That's why now it's different in my life. I pray for another people too. One morning when I was sitting in prayer, I realized that I wasn't doing anything for the poor. You know, the Bible tells us two things, love God and love your neighbor. And to me, this is a way of doing love with my neighbor. Christ told us to love one another as he loved us. And this is, the, in my opinion, the perfect expression of that love. It allows us as believers to come here and act out in a very basic, life essential way God's love for other people. I want people to see Christ through me and the actions that I take. And that was something I could do. I could help feed the hungry and I could help clothe the naked. Volunteering in any other charity wouldn't be the same like being here. Uh, you know, this is a family. It's just a great place to be, a great place to, to do things, to work, to kid each other, to laugh, to pray. I don't think any other place has this feeling to it. Christ is everywhere here and it makes a huge difference. There's a different feel in the interactions here because of it. I didn't think I would be suited for that, um, helping needy people and all of that, but it turned out that I love it here, and um, it's, a, it's a pleasure to help the people. I love to work with the clients, to give them a hug. I love it when they, um, that you can remember their name and they feel touched. I really feel like we have clients that come in to see us on Wednesdays because they know that we'll be there. They see us uh, family, that's how I feel. They leave your problems. You always are thinking about what it is more that you can do for them. Um, if they need a car, is there somebody that you can tap into that may have a car that wants to donate? We need individual support. We need financial support to, to serve our clients, to provide the food. When people look at my shelves or the shelves of the ministry, I always see the faces of the people that are donating the items that are on our shelves because everything that comes in has been donated by somebody. I've seen where the food goes, I've seen it help myself. That made it easy for me to honestly tell people how much their support mattered to us. By donating financially, you are able to reach so many people. So I thank God for putting FFX Western Christian Ministries in my life because you all have really been a blessing to me and my daughter.